the namesake of my channel, Thedoric the Great, once wrote a letter to Eastern Roman Emperor Anastasius, in which he said, Our royalty is an imitation of yours, modeled on your good purpose, a copy of the only empire. When I first saw this quote, I was baffled why a king, or any ruler for that matter, would give such praise to a foreign nation. But when I started digging deeper, it all started to make sense. Thedoric had spent much of his youth as a political hostage in Constantinople, where he surely experienced and witnessed the great cultural, architectural, and administrative greatness of the Roman Empire, which would have been a stark contrast to the brutish Ostrogoths, who lived in mud huts and were in a perpetual state of warfare. Thedoric realized through his life experiences the culture and lifestyle of his people was vastly inferior to that of the Romans and the Greeks. But many modern-day academics would claim, from their ivory towers, that all cultures are equal, and Thedoric probably suffered from internalized racism or internalized barbarian phobia. The idea that all cultures are created equally is a modern invention, created by people who have never experienced the brutishness and savagery that many cultures have to offer. This modern idea is known as cultural relativism, which I hope to thoroughly debunk throughout the course of this video. The Battle of Monte Cassino during the Italian campaign of the Second World War was a massive battle, with 380,000 men taking part in combat on both sides, with the Germans and Italians on one side, and a very diverse army of soldiers on the other side, ranged from Italians as well as American, Canadian, Polish, Greek, British, Indian, South African, in Senegalese. But the most notable or infamous of the nationalities present would be the Moroccans, who were employed by the French colonial regime. And these Moroccans would go on a raping spree throughout many villages around Monte Cassino, raping a total of 7,000 women and even many men and boys. With the youngest victim of this was a five-year-old girl, and the oldest was 85. While wartime sexual violence is unfortunately very prevalent throughout most wars in human history, and committed by men from all different ethnicities and cultures. But during this battle, mass rape was only committed by Moroccan soldiers. While there may have been individuals from other backgrounds who participated, it was only the Moroccans who went from village to village, raping every woman they came across. Which isn't very surprising. The Berber people, until very recently by that point, were quite violent and tribal, with pillaging villages and abducting women being a frequent aspect in Berber culture. And this barbaric aspect of Berber culture was well known to the French officers who would allow the Moroccans to inflict their barbaric desires onto Italian women, who the French saw as no better than the Nazis who had occupied their homeland. It's even speculated by some that the French brought a large amount of colonial Moroccan troops into the Italian campaign, knowing that they would inflict their cruelty onto the Italians, who they saw as racially inferior. Regardless if any of these allegations are true, it is undeniable the Moroccan soldiers who took part in the mass rape of Italian women were savages, plain and simple, who have a culture where women are seen as purely objects, war trophies to be taken. Even today, Morocco has an alarmingly high rate of sexual violence, with 8 out of 10 girls experiencing some form of sexual violence throughout their lifetime. And Berber men don't just inflict rape upon their own women with a disproportionate amount of rape being committed by North African immigrants in every country with a sizable North African population, whether it be France, Germany, Sweden, Norway, etc. Why do European nations allow these savages in their country will be a topic of its own video. But stands to reason that the culture the Berbers have is morally inferior to that of many developed nations in Europe or Asia. In the mere idea that this culture of rape that the Berbers and many other people unfortunately have is somehow morally equal or indistinguishable from that of other cultures is foolish idealism at its finest. The normalization of sexual violence isn't the only objectively morally repugnant cultural practice, which many cultures have and still do practice. Some that would come to mind would be widow burning in pre-colonial India, foot binding in China, female genital mutilation in West and Central Africa, as well as by some South American indigenous tribes. 
forced marriages of young girls to grown men in, well, basically every culture in human history at some point or another, and is still unfortunately very prevalent in many areas of the world, some far closer to home than you may expect, with some indigenous ethnic groups in Mexico still marrying off young girls to grown men, such as the Mistec, who still have a widespread child marriage custom, where young girls are not only sexually abused by their much older husbands, but also made to do basically all the manual labor for their so-called adopted family. A trend you may have noticed is that women seem to bear the brunt of the brutish behaviors and practices many of these cultures have to offer. This is an unfortunate fact of human history, with men using our physical strength and might to inflict unimaginable suffering and oppression onto women and young girls. But men have also done good and ended many of these barbaric practices, such as British governor Charles James Napier, a man who I share a great deal of respect for, who once said when arguing with a Hindu priest regarding the practice of widow burden, Be it so, the burden of widows is your custom. Prepare the funeral pyre. But my nation has a custom. When men burn women alive, we hang them and confiscate all their property. My carpenter shall erect gibbets to hang all concerned when a widow is consumed. Let us all act according to national customs. If only the men of today, whether it be the self-righteous politicians who boast about inclusivity or the self-described human rights activists who work side by side with barbarians who mutilate little girls, only if the men of today were as brave and virtuous as Charles James Napier, maybe the world would be a better place. Now, some naysayers may say it is wrong to force a culture to abandon a practice. But if forcing the Indians to get rid of the practice of widow burning was such a horrid thing, why is it today, in 2024, have the Indians not returned to it? India is a nuclear-armed country. India has a billion people. No one is in any place today to force India to stop a cultural practice. So why have the Indians, in the 70 years since the end of British colonialism, not returned to the practice of widow burning? It's because the Indian people, whether they like to admit it or not, are aware that the practice was cruel, and the British were right to force them to abandon the practice. Many people groups and nations throughout history who came in contact with more developed ones changed their culture, not by force, but out of commemoration such as the Romans after invading Greece, the Assyrians after invading Babylon, the nomadic steppe tribes whom conquered China, the Chichimeca who started to migrate to Mesoamerica in the 6th century. All of them adopted aspects or outright assimilated to the cultures that they had conquered. And while primitive cultures do have many positive aspects about them, and many more advanced cultures have quite negative aspects about them, and some individuals from advanced cultures have chosen to live in primitive ones, but they are exceptions to the rule. In advanced cultures, such as the Romans, the Mesoamericans, Chinese, Mesopotamians, Ethiopians, were all cultures that were admired to by most of their immediate neighbors, who would attempt to emulate and copy their cultures. So why is it that in modern academia, particularly modern anthropology, a field which you have quite a passion for, is this objectively wrong mindset so prevalent? Well, there isn't one simple answer, but there's a few reasons that contribute to cultural relativism's intense grip on our civilization. The first and probably biggest reason for cultural relativism's presence would be the fact that modern Westerners live in the safest time in all of human history, when people live safe, cushy lives, who have no fear of being gutted alive for human sacrifice, or having the Mongols come to your village, kill your sons and rape your daughters, they become delusional and have a warped view of the world and believe that everyone is inherently good, and that all cultures are equal, and everyone can just hold hands and sing kumbaya and frolic around the fields, fart in rainbows, or some shit. This mindset is delusional and dangerous and has led to many unnecessary deaths, as well as horrific sexual assaults, such as the Spanish tourist who was gang-raped by six Indian men, and even after going through her traumatic experience, she claims that India is a safe place for women, which is not true, not just for the tourists, but for the average woman, 
with India having one of the highest rates of sexual assault in the world. It is believed that 90% of sexual assaults go unreported. Another reason for cultural relativism's presence would be the fact that our governments and many left-leaning politicians and political parties are obsessed with allowing in massive amounts of immigrants from vastly different cultures. And while they claim that culture is just food, or how you dress, or what jokes you do and don't like, it is a lot more than this, as I've displayed throughout this video. These politicians will lie through their teeth to make you believe that we can all live in harmony, that all immigrants will happily assimilate and integrate into their host countries, which is not true. With Middle Eastern and African immigrants in every European country committing a disproportionate amount of violent crimes, notably rape. Another reason is probably the white guilt epidemic that is faced in many Western civilizations. With many white people believing they are inherently evil and that colonization had no positives and only brought destruction and misery to colonized countries, which I have displayed earlier, is far from the truth. And while I do think it is a positive that we in the West can acknowledge our wrongdoings, but it has been taken too far, many white people metaphorically self-flagellate and perform humiliation rituals in a desperate search for expiation to their vast amounts of generational guilt, which is something that no other civilization which has committed atrocities have done. Not the Turks who slaughtered 2 million Christians during the First World War. Not the Japanese who killed 20 million Asians during the Second World War. Not the Russians who've... God, I don't even know how many atrocities they've committed. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to count. And not the Chinese, who are currently committing genocide against the Uyghur population of East Turkestan. Only white Westerners, and this is because, in my own personal opinion, because we're weak, too individualistic, too soft, and too optimistic about the positives of so-called multiculturalism. Whatever the reason may be, cultural relativism is a foolish ideology that must be called out for what it is. It should become one of those ideologies that are widely condemned by modern society, such as fascism or communism. Oh, oh wait.